We are robot in three days, and this year, we're not building the robot in three, two, but in one day. So check us out on our journey to deep space. First step is to acquire and hold the cargo. It's so scary! This <laughs> is not making it stupid. A robot's gotta move, so we built the drivetrain. Stitches get stitches, but hatches get latches. Time to build a gripper. Your Velcro. We're here to kick cargo and use that. Now we gotta put it all together. Oh! Debbie Morgan. Go! We did it. We finished the robot in 24 hours. Let's check it out. Woke up, told myself to push and never stop. I've been stressed out, watching both these hands around the clock. With my eyes wide, trying to get the panorama shot. Whole world getting blurry to me, answers getting lost. So I watch my back and keep it moving to the front. And remember that the world's yours, do it how you want. You've been waiting here for too long, think it's time for you to move on. So once the robot was complete, I mean, the question had to be asked, would it climb the platform? So we did a lot of, you know, some really normal stuff. We calculated the, uh, the, the center of gravity, the center of mass, whatnot, the polar moment of inertia, uh, the tensile strength of the treads, uh, the, you know, the velocity. We took into account the Coriolis effect. Check the rev rail for vortex shedding naturally. And, and check the general profile that it met uh, Bernoulli's equations. Um, let's see, we do. So, you know, really.
Now that you've seen it work, let's get to the nitty gritty and look at those details. So this year, we decided we we're gonna go with the new Andymark Raptor tank tread system with the new black urethane tank treads. These tank treads are a flat black tread that I believe will be very, very uh, useful on the plastic surfaces that we may encounter in first. We are using the Evo shifters from past years on our drivetrain the system this year. We would have loved to use the Neo motors from Rev Robotics this year. We did not have enough time to get those quite ready for uh, an operational drive system for this robot. For teams that are using the Raptor tank tread system this year, I definitely recommend reading through the manual before attempting a build. There's a lot of different moving parts. It's easy to make mistakes along the way. So we know from past year's games that we like using roller grippers to acquire the game piece. And this year we've got the cargo, which is a round ball. We've got these compliance wheels. They're three inch compliance wheels from Mark. We noticed right away that they get great traction on the ball. So we decided to combine that with some rev rail planetary gearboxes from Vex uh, Bursa Planetaries, and then hubs and pulleys and belts from the kit parts chassis from previous years. So the gripper worked really well, but we noticed we could have a few improvements. For ball corralling, if you got it at a weird angle, it would kick the ball away, the cargo would roll away. So maybe a wider or taller gripper, depending on which orientation. We also wanted to consider maybe a horizontal row where the top set of rollers would bring it towards you, and the bottom set of rollers would scoop it up and in. We feel like if you had a long row of a horizontal roller kit, you could acquire the cargo from any angle and help it from kicking away uh, in some of those critical situations. Overall, this build went pretty well for us. Uh, we liked the way that it turned out for our 24-hour build, and it did a good job while we were driving. To acquire and score the hatch panels, we started off with a prototype that we used some springs, and the thought was you could pull a, a piston or something in, and the springs would get wider and grab the inside of the circle. Did a couple prototypes, we cut some PVC out, didn't really work that well. Uh, it might work if you had time to develop it, but we didn't have that time obviously with the 24 hour build. So we moved on, we ha had that PVC there, and we thought, oh, it'd be really cool if it was like a flower with petals that kind of opened up. Um, did some quick prototypes of that and what the internet effectively calls the demo gorgon from Stranger Things. Uh, it's pretty simple. There's the three pieces of PVC that we cut and shaped using the sander and the bandsaw. Cut the three of them pretty identical. There's some Delrin pieces on the bottom that work as a hinge. Um, in the center, there's a, a piston that actuates in and out and on top of it, there's a washer with three holes drilled in it. Then from that washer, we've got some zip ties and aluminum tubes that basically make a linkage. So when the pistons extended, the demo gorgons open, and when the pistons retracted, the demo gorgons closed. There's some panels in the back that spacers, so basically what happens is, is when that hatch panel's on there and the, the, the flower opens up, it pushes it back into, that, into those blocks, so it really won't come off. And then when it's ready to be removed, it closes back up and it'll just fall right off. Uh, it seems to be a pretty effective design. There's certainly things you could do to make it more effective as you develop through a season, but we're pretty happy with the performance of it in our quick build. Oh hey, didn't see you there. Next up to talk to you about integration is Barry Bonzac. Oh, I guess, I guess you'd like to sit. All right, okay. All right. For our elevator, we used the rev rail, but we used the V bearings with an actuator to be able to make it move up and down without having to use any cabling. The actuator is a Dart 12 inch with a sim motor on it, and it's connected to a wrist that has a Bainbot 36 to 1 with a Mark Redline motor. For the hatch side, we use a 6 inch Dart with a smaller sim motor on it to be able to get the actuation just so it can fit inside the envelope and then lift up and then open the beak to be able to grab onto the hatches. For the Dart actuators, we would be able to use the Neo brushless motors. However, we had some problem with the software integration with the libraries. We were able to figure it out offline, but for this build, we went ahead and used the sim motors, both the large one and the smaller one. Barry, if you're done, I'm gonna go ahead and reclaim my chair. You're up. Uh, this is gonna get my good side. Take what we've done in 24 hours and learn from it. You have six weeks, we expect awesome out of y'all. Yeah, you could do a much better job than we did. In one day, we built all this stuff, take them as prototypes, learn from them, develop them. You can do a much better job than we did. Yeah, one of our keys to success was setting a project schedule and sticking to it. Building project goals and managing project resources to achieve those goals is critical to your success. And a special thanks to our sponsors, Andymark, Rev Robotics, and IR3. 
Best of luck this season. We'll see you in deep space. See you on Planet Primus. <laughs> One of these days, Andrew, straight to deep space. <laughs>